Hey guys, thought I'd give you a quick little video on installing my Z bracketing on the Z Plus. So I've got my little machine here. I've got all of the parts here. If you'll notice, I've already put in the screws, um, attached the earpieces to the track brackets here, and I'm ready to attach. Um, you'll also notice that I've removed the stock um, proximity switch bracket. So I went ahead and removed that. Um, I still have the screws. I'm going to be reusing those. I'm actually going to be using my own bracketing, but we're going to do that last. So I have got my brace. I'm going to slide it right in here. Um, I'm just going to wiggle it into place. There it goes. Now, once it wiggles in, there's a few, there's four divots on, on this brace, um, which line right into the uh, risers for the mo sock motor here. Um, you'll notice that I've, if just in case you need to, your pulley may be either backwards, um, as in the key is, or the out, the screws are on the front side. Mine are actually on the back side, so I had plenty of room between the pulley and the brace. Um, I'm not sure if there's a standard or something like that, but needless to say, um, I've got plenty of room, just slid that in. So I take my right brace, I take two of the M5 by 20 screws. Um, I did lengthen them, so they will go deeper into the ear um, on purpose. <laughs> and make sure I got my right, oh, I need another Allen hex wrench. Here we go. So for my M5 by 20s, looks like I need a three millimeter hex wrench. So I've got that. I'm gonna hold it right up here, pass the uh, screw right through the brace and right into my ear piece. So I'm gonna tighten it down. Now this is still screwing into plastic. Um, I've yet to find a good way to attach uh, screws or nuts or something. I'm still investigating that. I don't want to widen the carriage much more than what it is, what, I, what I'm doing now um, to accommodate my track brackets. But um, whenever I figure that out, I will definitely be sure that it's published and an upgrade that's easily done. So I'm gonna put in my second M5 by 20 screw. I'm gonna just screw that right in there. Mm -mm -mm. I actually do it. There we go. So I'm going to hold my track bracket so that it's nice and vertical. Tighten that down. There we go. And it should be nice and tight there. There will be a tiny bit of play there, um, but it should go away after, um, after we attach the other side. There may still be just a tiny bit of uh, play there after that, but it's not enough to affect how the boot operates. Um, so yeah, we're gonna jump over to the other side and I'm gonna bring you around to the front side this time so you can see what's going on in the front. Okay, here we are on the um, front side, on the left side. So I'm gonna move my wire out of the way so it's nice and out of the way. I've already got my left track bracket um, with my ear attached. You'll notice that it's the opposite. So there, there's some there's some locking nuts in there. We are not using those on the front side. We want to screw into the locking nuts that are on the back side. That way there's a nice big piece of thick plastic in between the head of the screw and where it's pulling the ear towards it. So the other pieces are for a just recently announced speed mount. Um, so that way the whenever the screw goes through the speed mount um, attach the speed mount plate um, goes through the track bracket and into the um, locking nut it squeezes the plate and the track bracket so that it holds that in place does that make sense um, you've got your track your your yeah <laughs> i'll move on so we've got our two m5 screws in our ear we're going to attach it just hold it right up there um, going to attach it. I'm going to go ahead and hand feed, hand thread what I can. Um, remember, we are still going into plastic. So if you've, if you've already threaded those, uh, pre-threaded those, uh, that's a good idea. 
Um, otherwise, just pop it right on. You may need to use a little driver or something on a very, very low torque setting, because this is, again, plastic. You don't want to strip it. So the instant your driver receives any sort of resistance, it should start clicking, and then you can switch over to a hand to uh, tighten it up nice and good. Once you start getting that resistance, a couple of clicks, um, a couple of turns, uh, or a quarter turn, or a half turn, or whatnot, should be sufficient. There we go. So I'm making sure my track bracket is nice and vertical because as this Z carriage goes up and down, I don't want it rubbing against the edge of my track. Um, we don't want the track, the bracketing, to interfere with the Z at all. So, and I can take that just by looking straight down. So we've got both track brackets. You'll notice it's nice and strong now. Um, there is a tiny bit of play there that is perfectly acceptable. And let's make sure everything's nice and tight. Just to make sure my front's tight now that I got it mounted. I should be able to give it another squeeze or two on both sides. There we go. And that should give a really tight connection there. That way there's nothing needs to be attached to the bottom. Um, just nice, solid uh, construction. So I'm going to switch it back over to the other side and we're going to work on uh, the limit switch. All right, here we are on the back side again. And we are going to take, uh, I think we're still doing M3. Yep, M3 for the main piece. So we've got two M5 by, uh, I believe these are 30, and maybe 35, I forget. Um, but they go through, they stick out just enough, and they will dig right into the plastic of the brace. Again, this is also a plasticky connection. Um, not vital that this is, is perfect, um, because it is just a limit switch. So if there's a, a half a millimeter or a quarter millimeter difference um, in the way the carriage goes, it's fine because it will compensate, because uh, there's plenty of adjustment here. So essentially, let me find my original plate. You'll notice that that mine, well, I guess it's really hard to notice. There it goes, I'm gonna line it up. Should line it up pretty well. There is minor adjustments to it, um, specifically raising it up a little um, so that it can um, easily mount on there. And the key thing, of course, is being that it's a lot easier to install this with its raised bracket here um, so that it avoids my button screws there. So I'm going to take my M3, or my three millimeter. I can stop moving the, moving the carriage. Go, I'm gonna just kind of hand tighten it in there just to get it started. And now I can actually get in there. Start screwing that in. And again, this is screwing into plastic so if you if you use a driver be sure be sure not to uh, tighten that down too tightly there so um, you'll notice that the whenever I put the original on there the brace it runs even 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 with the brace and all that my the new position of the this guy will sit a little further in and help avoid whatever track you happen to have. I've got the uh, the small or the standard size um, Shapoko, which does not have the cable tracks. Um, I just they just have them hanging out there, um, which is fine. And but if you've got a larger one, you're going to have cable ch uh, cable chains um, going around and having it closer to the carriage will help avoid that. So now I'm going to take their original M3 screws, pop that through. It looks like this is two and a half. And I'm just going to screw that, screw that right into those two heat inserts I have on my, on my riser plate. So I'm going to look right from the front. I'm going to look straight back compare it, make sure that it is sticking, the sensor is sticking out further than the, than my tracks. I 
There. All right, that is installed. Got my tracks installed, brackets installed, and we're good to go. Um, last thing, of course, is you take your uh, support arms, your thumb screws, pop that right through, put the nut plate on the back side, put that right through, tighten it in, and you're good to go to mount your boot. That's all. Happy making.